you know, next to me, good just idea. because I know sometimes it's hard to hear. It's a good idea. Thank you. It's just hard. Okay, is there anybody who would like to make public comments at this time? Yes, you'll be fine. Uh, go ahead, Hillary. Um, just to, Andrew, we we had a gentleman in oh, the room. Okay. Sure. Can you state your name at the beginning of public comment too? Yes, I am Tyler Lagrange of uh, Royalton. Um, I came here uh, to just have a little see what's going on. Um, White River Unified District Board member draws ire online post spring crowd to meeting. It was front page of the local paper, and I was like, what, what's going on? You know, I read through it. Turns out it was primarily uh, one lady getting mad that a school board member was arguing on Facebook with some online instigators. Um, it was, so if you've been on the South Royalton Billboard Facebook group, which I recognize some people that have, um, you, know Judah, you know who Judah Brusso is. Uh, he likes to post the latest right-wing manufactured outrage. And a good chunk of his posts draw plenty of ire from the local community. So if arguing online with Jude is grounds for not being on the school board, uh, the slim, there could be slim pickings for uh, school board members around here because people like to argue with Jude. Um, so for me, I missed a lot of the context originally because I blocked Jude, which is the right thing to do when you're having problems with someone online and you don't want to have arguments with people online. You block them. Um, it's the recommended way to avoid discussions you don't want to be involved in. But I did a little digging after the newspaper article, uh, and I made an online post um, that I didn't like the cancel culture mentality of you know trying to get someone kicked off the school board uh, for, for some things she posted online. So only after Kate Jarvis replied to my post did I realize that I actually already knew Kate Jarvis. Uh, she prepared our, she was one of the real estate agents we worked with when we moved to Wilson two years ago. She prepared our comparative market analysis, but didn't focus on school board members, so it didn't seem to be a big issue, obviously, at the time. Um, so we had a small back and forth on Facebook about this because I had a few details wrong. I accused her a couple things wrong, but then she tried to deny that she was trying to get someone kicked off the board, which obviously is questionable. Um, uh, and then she said, uh, Kate is entitled to her own opinions. I agree. I, I pointed out that we all are, including Shannon. Then I was blocked by Kate for just pointing that out. Um, so my wife was blocked too. We were trying to find out and get more context about it. Others could still see the comments because I would get notifications about those comments, but I couldn't read them anymore because I was blocked. So I'm not sure if she just blocked us or went private, but why did she do this? She doesn't want people to see her contradicting opinions while formally filing a complaint against somebody defending their opinions. And if Kate would have just blocked Shannon when she didn't like what Shannon was saying, or better yet, blocked Jude, because he's the, he's the person that should be blocked around this town, um, then we certainly wouldn't be here today. And instead, she escalated this, and I'm digging through Facebook trying to figure out what the context is because this printout is missing a ton of context. It just has a couple of negative comments that she, she hasn't said, but missing what led up to it. But so after more digging, if we're going to go down the path of getting school board members kicked off the board for nebulous conflicts of interest, I think our next target should be Chris Jarvis because um, Chris has multiple posts about how climate change is not really a big deal, right? Which, you know, you can argue with that. We can, we can discuss that if we want to, but that's not why we're here. At the same time, he's literally sitting on the school board um, discussing electric buses and grants for electric buses and other energy related income uh, and uh, climate change adjacent policies that affect our schools and our budgets. So that sounds like a more questionable conflict of interest. Okay. I um, think been three minutes so if you wouldn't mind wrapping up yeah so 
Uh, but honestly, you know, I sat through the, the the last meeting. I sat through the whole thing, listened to everybody, and everybody in here behaved professionally and was focused entirely on performing the tasks that they were elected to perform. Having some diverse or strong opinions on the board is not a negative aspect of the board. Um, and in fact, it's it's a positive to have people having different different point of views and different discussions. So thank you, Shannon, for sticking up for the LGBTQ kids and thank you Chris for uh, serving the community and every one of the kids thank you all for serving the community every one of the kids and the faculty at our schools thank you, thank you. Um, Hillary I think you had your hand raised sorry we're juggling bedtime at the same time as this meeting <laughs> so my husband's gonna take bedtime tonight um, so I'm Hillary Hoffman I'm resident of Royalton um, I have Four kids total, um, one who just graduated from White River Valley High School um, two years ago, and then I have three kids who are still in the high school and um, the elementary school over in Bethel. And um, there's a lot that, um, that I want to say tonight. Um, in three minutes, I probably won't be able to say everything that I'd like to say, but um, I echo what I heard from the previous speaker. I missed um, their name, but I wanted to echo that um, I think diversity of opinion on the school board is a good thing. And I think we have a school board right now that represents the diversity of opinions in our community. We clearly have a community that has strong opinions on the issue that gave rise to this complaint and many other issues, including maybe climate change and electric buses. And um, I think that I, if the board decides to start um, taking actions against board members for speaking in their individual capacity, um, whether it's on Facebook or um, you know in person at the co-op or um, on the town green, that that is just a problematic road to go down, and one that um, I think would be, you know, I think a lot of us disagree with um, certain members of the school board about certain issues and. Um, to me, that doesn't merit um, taking any kind of formal action, especially if that action involves curtailing the school board members' ability to speak, especially in their individual capacity. So um, I wanted to say that. And then I also wanted to just speak as a parent um, of kids in the district and on behalf of kids in the district who are um, LGBTQ, I know these kids, um, these are actual kids, human beings that we're talking about. And so in these Facebook discussions and in these school board meetings, I think a lot of this debate has become more about like the political views or policy perspectives of parents, adults, other members of the community. But at the heart of all of this is our kids and our friends' kids and our kids' friends and their parents. And, and especially for the trans kids, I think they're facing they now know that they're facing a community that's incredibly hostile to them and that challenges their very identity. So I just wanted to express that I support the way the school district, the teachers, the staff and the administration and the board have navigated this incredibly challenging issue in a way that protects them and safeguards them and safeguards their rights to privacy and their rights to their identity. Um, I support that. I support Shannon and her advocacy, specifically with respect to those issues. And I would just strongly encourage the board to dismiss this complaint or take whatever action is necessary to um, end this, end the discussion of um, the conflict of interest involving Shannon. Thanks. Thank you, Hillary. Um, Andrew, we, we have some, a hand up here. Okay. Go ahead. Or you can do it from there, you just go. Sure. So Kate Jarvis, I'm a resident of Woodstock. My daughters attend Bethel and Royalton School. I'm just gonna speak in regards to Tyler LaGrange's comments, um, just in defense of my name and my professional career. Uh, so Tyler, I, you're correct in the fact that I did represent you and welcomed you into the community when I helped you to buy your home in Royalton. Um, I did not mention any conflict of interest 
with our school board because there was no conflict and nor do I involve that in my professional manner. Um, let's see, for you to bring that here tonight, you know, it's crossing a line. I am a professional, I'm a licensed professional as is Shannon. So I'm held to an ethical conduct and a professional conduct. So I have to be careful of what I say and how I conduct myself publicly. So there are certain things that are not allowed to be said. When you made certain comments about me publicly, that I was a mother or not a mother, I was a member of Woodstock, a resident of Woodstock. I was not a mother. I had no children in the district, right? You moved here from out west this year, I believe. Two years ago. Two years ago. Um, I've lived here for 17 years. And I have a 20 year old, a 14 year old and a 12 year old daughter who have attended these schools since birth. So for you to come here and judge me and say I was a resident of Woodstock who had no right to speak about the schools here or to, I forget how you worded it, try to have a school board member fired for no right. Um, I chose to block you and your wife instead of defending myself against your false claims because I had no interest in debating with you or fighting with you publicly on Facebook. As a professional, I said, you know, I'm not gonna go back and forth with him. He was, a, he was a client, he's bought his house, welcome to the community. It had nothing to do with you not seeing my complaint because my complaint was not presented to Facebook. My complaint was presented to the board, the White River Valley Supervisory Union Board and the White River Valley Unified District Board, not to you, not to Facebook, and not to Shannon's friends. Okay, so I have no need to defend myself to you. That's all. And you are blocked and you will remain blocked. I have no interest in being friends with you on Facebook. Thank you. Thanks. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak at this time? I'm Courtney Collins. I'm a 14 year resident in Randolph and 15 year employee of Vermont Law School. I'm married with two children currently in Randolph School District. I'm speaking in my own capacity and not on behalf of my employer. I'm well connected in our local communities and have known Shannon since our boys attended preschool together at Magic Mountain Children's Center in South Royalton. I am also a mother to a trans identifying middle school child. And as a queer person myself, I'm an active member of Vermont's LGBTQ plus community. I didn't expect to attend one of your meetings, but since my name has been brought into the situation, I thought it only fair that you hear from me directly. I speak in support of Shannon. Nowhere in the online exchange did Shannon state or imply she was speaking on behalf of the school board in fact, she provided detailed information about the quorum necessary for the board to act, proving that she herself cannot represent your board in an individual capacity. What Shannon did do was respond online exactly how we want our allies to do so. She provided facts and information to comments made in good faith, but these screenshots are missing. She also took on the exhausting task of rebutting against the weaponized trolling taking place. Screenshots of these comments are also missing. If there needs to be an examination of this online discussion, then the board should review it in its entirety because otherwise her responses are out of context and you're presented with a false narrative. It really isn't difficult to discern between the genuine discussion versus online harassment she was responding to. The last thing any of you should do is remain silent in response to anti-LGBTQ hate. These comments are unacceptable in our communities, especially when directed toward children. Local and national leaders are repeatedly calling for all of us to hold people accountable for their lies and hatred towards LGBTQ plus people. Just last week, Senator Bernie Sanders said, quote, the terrible shooting in Colorado Springs this weekend is a direct result of the hateful and violent rhetoric 
that has been allowed to grow in this country. We must stand united with the LGBTQ plus community and speak out against bigotry wherever we find it, unquote. This is your responsibility as allies. So yes, I am absolutely delighted when an ally like Shannon uses her time, energy, and free speech to stand up against and challenge transphobic comments. But as a queer person myself, it's deeply disturbing to discover that my private post on my private social media account, none of which is public, was made available to someone in this community to then turn around and attack her support. Targeting the people standing up for LGBTQ plus children and not the people spreading intentionally harmful transphobic online comments is by definition transphobic behavior. Filing to remove Shannon from this board and get her fired from her job and also revoke her business license and also get myself fired from my job and also get my husband fired from his job is a pattern of stalking and intimidation. Let me be very clear. As a queer person and parent to a gender expansive child, manipulating my words and threatening my livelihood for supporting Shannon and trans rights is a hate attack against me and my family. In conclusion, I invite the board to consider this. Do your constituents want you to tone police a woman's voice and debate the obligation to speak up? Or would they rather you focus on the actual task at hand of supporting the safety and equitable treatment of all our kids in our schools? I thank the board members for your time and for your hard work. First, just in response to those comments. It's, it's really Andrew's call. So, uh, okay. But if I can like, respond to those comments. Okay, why don't you wait until everybody's had a chance to speak? I think you'll have a chance to speak later, okay? okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. Scott Trout, Stratford, Vermont. Just to rebut something I just heard. The uh, Bernie Sanders is blaming the right wing, the Christian, the usual suspects. They're always blamed for the hate crimes, a person was arrested in Colorado Springs was binary, self-identifies as trans. So to throw that as an NRA Republican guy that created the hate crime is absolute uh, bull feather, so to speak. Anyways, let's get to the heart of the matter here. There's a complaint on deck that you people are handling regarding inappropriate behavior in the public sphere by a school board member named Shannon Higgins. What I've seen thus far on our online postings is basically she's uh, the vanguard of cancel culture here. She's used foul language online. She's threatened people. She's uh, basically conducted herself inappropriately and under the Vermont Constitution, the code of conduct for professionals in this state and state and elected officials, she's far beyond the pale on that. I am in full support of this uh, item right here to remove her on the conflict of interest. And let me digress a little bit here. Since we're all going far afield, you're talking about her real estate endeavors. Let me just talk about a little uh, thing that's going on here in South Railton at the schools, which is the uh, the elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. I just heard all these um, voices crying out for LGBTQ um, tolerance and transgender kids and how they're being suppressed and oppressed. The reality is the bullying is going the other way. The normal kids, the Christian kids, the kids that are normal, are being buffaloed and bullied and assaulted inside this school system for not agreeing with the trans agenda or coming from households that are not in full complement with the LGBTQ uh, agenda. So let me just put this to the board. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Those of us now become politically active in this community because of the actions here and the actions we're seeing displayed in this complaint against one of your school board members we aren't going away. And as a matter of fact, we're going to dig in deep here. Um, my position, um, and I think I have to speak for a lot of the people in the community who are parents here, um, who will not attend these meetings because they're fearful of retaliation in the school system, not just by teachers, but also by administrators, that they have to have people in here speaking out against some of the madness. And this complaint is full of madness. There's foul language every place. It's F this guy and shove it to this person and cancel culture is alive and well here. There are people, there's things in this complaint that weren't included that there are local businesses here that have just spoken out 
again, something as simple as the CRT program that is or isn't in the school system here. And there have been people in the LGBTQ community have taken upon themselves to go and start writing master reviews about the business and organizing boycotts. So anyway, my three minutes is almost up. I'm just here to say, we're not going away. This issue is a lot larger than one complaint against one school board member. It's much larger than that. It involves bullying. It involves the politicization of the school system. It involves getting away from the three R's and instead advancing an agenda. We're not going to tolerate it. And right here and right now, at this point in time, in South Royalton, Vermont, it's hit a stone wall and it stops with us. Thank you for your time. Anybody else who would like to make public comment at this time? Um, Kate, Kate. has her yet. Yeah. yeah, Kate, if you want to say one last thing, um, and then we're, I think you'll get a chance to speak as part of the complaint. Do you want to just do it? No, I was going to address the um, the claims and all these, you know, they're being set on Facebook and everything else. So why not address them as they come, Andrew? Okay. Um, Courtney Collins, thank you. I'm not you. here to be attacked again. Attack? Well, don't you want me to answer to? Okay. You don't. So Courtney Collins, the only reason I had brought the comments that were made um, publicly was because there was a Facebook post made on October 7th after I attended a school board meeting in regards to concerns that Shannon had made publicly. So Courtney Collins said, update, hey mutuals, please be aware that Kate Jarvis is a transphobic and took my post to try and discredit Shannon for standing up for our children. You may want to reconsider your friendship with her or with me. This was following the post that said appreciation post for Shannon Morrill Cornelius, who has absolutely destroyed a transphobic asshole on a lo local Facebook page. Let the record show that her voice prevailed. I have gorged myself on his pathetic male tears. Okay. Yes, Kate, you had this in, in your complaint. So we have seen these comments. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to add or can we... Uh... Are you asking me to stop speaking, Andrew? Well, I I think it would be good if we could move on to the complaint. Sure. Okay. Um, looks like we have one more public comment, I guess, and then we'll move on to the complaint. Sharon, go ahead. My apologies for speaking late. Um, I'm a mother of three, my oldest daughter who identifies um, LGBTQ, just graduated last year, valedictorian. And um, I have two other children going through the school system here um, in the Bethel, like in middle school and the high school. And I grew up here in Vermont. And quite honestly, I'm terrified by what's happening. Um, Whatever the disagreements we've always had, it's always been about still coming together as a community and supporting our children should be utmost the most important part. If there legitimately is bullying against children in the school, regardless of what they're saying, that shouldn't happen. But hate shouldn't be accepted either. So if there's hate speech, that should be put down. Hate speech should never be acceptable at school, regardless of who's saying it and how they're saying it. Um, supporting our children. Um, I just want to uh, restate what Hillary said earlier. This is about our kids and supporting our kids. And this is the society that we live in. And whatever your point of views or religious beliefs are, students who are transgender exist they're not going away and we need to support them so teaching the three r's in the school system is reliant on us giving them a safe space to learn because children do not learn when they do not feel safe and if there is bullying going in any direction yes that needs to be put to a stop but 
most importantly, I think, coming together as a community and saying hate speech of any kind shouldn't be allowed. Standing up to hate speech should be supported. And um, I'm there's a lot of what I would consider for, oh, it just gaslighting when we're saying that there is bullying and happening on one side when it seems like at least two different people have outright tried to get people fired and attack them in their businesses and other people are simply just standing up for LGBTQ kids online and not trying to get people fired, just saying, we think you're wrong. And there's a very big difference there to outright attack people's livelihoods, attack them in their place of business and to steal personal information from Facebook pages is highly inappropriate versus taking public comments and responding to them, which is what social media is and right or wrong, it does tend to get negative quickly, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's also where we come together and say, hey, let's focus and be a community again. Okay. I think we'll move on to um, the discussion public complaint against board member policy A1. Um, so as people are aware, um, Kate Jarvis has filed a complaint um, against Shannon on, under the conflict of interest policy. Um, so that's what the board will be considering right now, whether um, there is a conflict of interest in this case or whether there is not. Um, so uh, Kate, did you want, would you like to present your side of the story? Kate Jarvis, I'm currently a resident of Woodstock, Vermont. I have resided in Royalton and Bethel for the past 17 years. My daughters attend seventh grade at Bethel Middle School and the other is a freshman here in Royalton. I feel like I have repeated this story 17 times in the past month, just trying to simply be heard by our school board as a group to report one member's conduct, sadly with no resolution or action thus far. Let the record show that it is sad that I as a parent have had to defend myself and my children multiple times just to simply pose a question or concern to our elected and or appointed school board. I came to the board over a month ago with concerns regarding a member of the board and her public comments, ridicule, taunting and bullying of parents and community members. After that concern was not seriously heard or considered, I chose to file a formal complaint two weeks ago on November 15th. I presented the complaint to both the White River Valley Supervisory Union Board and the White River Valley Unified District Board. After the White River Valley Supervisory Union Board chose to dismiss it last week, I do have a few follow-up questions and or notes. If need be, I will be submitting a second complaint after I have this week consulted with an attorney in which I can connect the dots for you folks. My complaint would lay out the number of policies, resolutions, and votes in which the board member named in this complaint, Shannon, has taken part in. I've clearly identified the conflict. If you need me to consume more professional time, family time, loss of income, and further public ridicule and slander, from Shannon's friends to clarify how there could be a conflict of interest, I'm happy to do so. My question to you, the board in the meantime, is over the course of the past few years that Shannon has served on the two boards and managed to bounce back and forth how many policies, resolutions, and votes have taken place? 
and more specifically, have been drafted, proposed, and or passed by her as an individual and by this board as a group. Means how you all tend to stick together. And I do add emphasis. I've spoken with, obviously I've repeated this multiple times, so you all know, I've speaking with, spoken with attorneys, I've spoken with legislatures, I think some of them may be attending tonight, um, licensed professionals, you know, we're all, we all are upheld to those levels of ethics and conduct. So we know them clearly. Some of us uphold them and others choose not to. Um, I do ask, I guess, let's see. So they agree that there's no doubt discrimination, clear unethical conduct, inappropriate representation, and conflict of interest. So how members of this board fail to see that is mind boggling and concerning to say the least. As a group, and again, I add emphasis, who is clearly in support of each other and has identified no acknowledgement or concern I ask you how the materials I've provided do not show discrimination towards the cis, binary, white, privileged, or however else you choose um, to discriminate against these students these days. Um, it's not clear or evident. Lastly, I'd like to request a list of discriminatory action taken towards this group of students over the past few years. As I question the unjust and inequitable dis disciplinary actions based on a conflict of interest originating from the White River Valley Supervisory Union and White River Valley U Unified District Board. Thank you. Shannon, you can have an opportunity to respond now. <laughs> Wow. Um, sure. So I will read my response and uh, file it for the minutes as well. Slightly different than my response to the SU last week. Um, all right. So as a scientist, I deal in facts. You can imagine how frustrating this is for me when the complaint we are answering isn't even correct in its most basic facts. For the record, I live in South Royalton. I was appointed to an empty Royalton seat in 2022 after I moved from Bethel, but I have been elected to the Rudd board multiple times and my seat is up for election in 2023. I do not work in New Hampshire. I'm also not a nurse, which was implied last meeting. However, my residence and employment have no bearing on the matter that this complaint raises. Regarding the substance of this complaint, which is very confusing, but seems to involve an allegation that I have a conflict of interest under 16 VSA section 563 based on some of my Facebook activity, none of my private interests are at risk of benefiting from or being harmed by my actions as a school board member. Other than the stipend we all receive for our work annually of $600, I have no financial conflict of interest. I do believe we all gain an emotional and psychological benefit from a sense of accomplishment in our work on the board, and I don't see that as a conflict. The law cited in this complaint is a statute that outlines the way that school districts throughout Vermont can form school boards and contains general guidance as far as the power powers and duties of school board members who are elected by the residents of each town. This statute provides that the school board shall establish policies and procedures designed to avoid the appearance of board member conflict of interest. However, the statute does not provide for administrative or judicial review of the school board members actions relative to the provisions of the law. Thus, while it is binding upon boards, there is no enforcement mechanism for a citizen, parent, or other individual citizen claiming to be aggrieved by a school board member's conduct to challenge that member's conduct by way of this law. Similarly, there is no power conferred on a school board to create a mechanism 
for administrative or judicial review of the complaints against a board member. The statute, the complaints uh, cites, does confer power on the electorate to take action directed at a school board member, but this is through the ballot box, not by appeal to the board. As far as the complaint's factual allegations, they are similarly devoid of an argument. I clearly stated during the Facebook debate in question that only a quorum of the board can make decisions or take action on behalf of the board. And I made it clear to all potential readers of the posts I made in my individual capacity and using my own personal Facebook account that they were offered in my personal capacity and not as a representative of the SU board or this school board. I am not required to make that statement when I speak publicly outside of school board meetings, but I did on that occasion. So it would be absolutely clear to those I was speaking to and with, and to anyone who might read my comments that I was speaking as an individual and not on behalf of our board. The complainant has through her actions demonstrated that she fails to comprehend that an elected or appointed public official has a First Amendment right to speak in their individual capacity, a right which is protected by the Vermont and U.S. constitutions. However, her failure to understand this basic constitutional right does not divest me of that right. The complainant has, for some reason, become so angry about my defense of the rights of transgender children in our school district that she has begun targeting me in my personal and professional capacity since I participated in the Facebook discussion in question. She has defamed me to the New Hampshire State Medical Licensing Board staff and made complaints against my New Hampshire license, specifically that I committed sexual discrimination on the basis of race and gender with my recent Facebook posts. Based upon information and belief and the statements made tonight by Courtney, she has also personally targeted other members of our community who have publicly spoken out in favor of protecting transgender students' civil rights and their rights to privacy. In short, it is important for my colleagues on the school board to know that the complainant has taken it upon herself to threaten my livelihood as a single parent, the income upon which my family depends, and my career, along with the livelihoods and income of other parents in the community who have defended transgender kids' civil rights and their rights to privacy. And after her comments back to Tyler tonight, if that's not the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. I will speak to the rest of the posts provided as a group and not individually with some more facts. Number one, I am outspoken. I always have been. My mom tried to cure it when I was in middle school to no avail, although maybe she should have bribed me with a pizza. No one who voted for me as a school board member was ever led to believe I am anything other than outspoken and sarcastic as I was very loud during the merger debate. Many have known me all my life and elected me anyway. I have a First Amendment right to speak my mind, even if it makes others uncomfortable at times. Two, I use colorful language. I have a sarcastic streak a mile long and I curse like a sailor, although I try not to in front of small children. Yes, my mom tried to cure me of that too. And again, I grew up in this community and I have never hidden exactly who I am. There are folks in this room who knew me in high school and can tell the stories. And again, I was elected twice to the seat by the community I grew up in. <clears throat> Point number three, I am a fierce ally for the LGBTQ, BIPOC and disability rights and the amplification of those voices in our community and in our schools. I never said I wasn't and never tried to hide it. Robert Jones on Twitter in 2015 said, quote, we can disagree and still love each other unless your disagreement is rooted in my oppression and denial of my humanity and right to exist, unquote. I respect those who respect that we all have a right to live our own lives in our own way. I will listen to community members who do not share my views, but at the moment, I cannot imagine that anything they could say would change my perspective 
that the hate speech and invalidating the identity of our LGBTQ students is a morally indefensible position. Which brings me to fact number four. If you want me off the board, you will need to find someone to run against me who can win. It's just that easy and just that hard. I have to live with people like Mitch McConnell and Ted Cruz holding office in this country. That's the political process. You don't have to like it, but you do have to live with it and you have to participate in the political process to achieve a political result. So in conclusion, I have no conflict of interest. I do fully believe standing up to bullies in this community in support of our anti-discrimination policies and anti-racism policies will help me win re-election to this seat because I fully believe that the people who elected me knew I would be an outspoken ally to those children and our staff members. And I believe that the people in this community who stand for those values vastly outnumber the ones who would stand against us. Even if the numbers changed, I cannot imagine adopting a position that results in discriminatory treatment of any children representing marginalized groups in our society. That is not my value set. And thankfully, it is not the value set of this school board. Thank you. Okay. Um, so at this point, the board can discuss. Uh, the I have one comment. Okay, I just. No, I'm sorry. At this point, it's just board discussion. Andrew, am I allowed to speak? How could it be just board discussion? Because you said we could speak about her complaint. I, won't, I gave an opening statement. No, oh, sorry. Talking. Scott, first of all, um, technically only people who are members of the Bethel Royalton community or have. But um, I am, and I'm the one that filed the complaint. So I would like to speak real quick, please. And I yes. hope at this you point, can that you can speak, Kate, but we're not going to have any members of the public speak at this point. That's fine, but I would like to speak. Well, then, this woman was from Randolph, and she was allowed to speak, Andrew, to go, and Courtney. So, I mean, what are we doing here? I let you speak as well. But at this point, it's just board and public. We have finished with public comment. We're on to the discussion okay, portion. Just a question for Shannon Higgins. Can a hey, man have a baby? Scott, that's not her name. Stop calling her Shannon Higgins, and you're not. Well, she said she was a scientist. I figured not, I had, can a man have a not, baby? Hey. We're not doing public comment right now. If you'd like to just address right, something to right. Shannon, she her email is online. You can ask her questions via that. It's on the public record. Okay, Kate, if you would like to speak, keep it keep it quick though, because we would like to discuss and and move on at this point. Two quick notes. So in regards to Shannon's um, I don't know what she called it, a note, a fact about um, me calling out her complaint with the licensing board for sexual discrimination, right? That is true. And that was in regards to the comments. So I spoke to an attorney today, again, and someone who had run for the state legislature who confirmed that is sexual discrimination. Okay, confirmed by an attorney, but you, the board, can decide, you, Shannon's friends, and the board can decide whatever you will. This is the comment that was reported to the licensing board and reviewed with the attorney. Chris Tutian just taught me a new term while reading the latest BS on the community forum from the transphobe trolls in town. He's just jacking off stands for assholes who keep coming at you with, but I just have a question, quote, unquote. We have a few who have jacked off so much over there, the forum is awash in their ridiculous ejaculated quarries. That is sexual discrimination, okay? Attorneys agree. I am a woman, I do not jack off. Anyway, we'll let the attorneys decide on that one. The other comment I'd like to make is Shannon's joke or fact, which was against a parent, remind you, Jason Trigade had made a comment on the public forum about his poor 12-year-old daughter who felt she was pressured in a classroom by um, pizza. Hey, is this in reference to the conflict of interest, though? Andrew Jones, this is in reference to my complaint in regard no, I to I understand, but if you could keep the, like, 
we've had a lot of discussion at this point. This isn't a hearing about we've had whether Shannon is rude or whether Shannon said things that were not appropriate. It's a hearing about whether she has a conflict of interest. She so I, I, un, I know the comment answer. that you're talking about. And, and you don't want to hear it. So I'm, I'm telling you, her fact about the pizza, her joke that she just made, the taunting, the same kind of behavior that's been going on, which is conflict of interest, the one I provided to you in an attachment, the pizza one that she said, oh my God, not pizza. That definitely turns kids LBGTQ. How could they use pizza? I'm stunned. That was in response to a parent who said that he felt his student was pressured to attend an LBGTQ group in class instead of going to a class. And she just made a joke about it. You as the chair, make your decision how you see fit. This is ridiculous. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I hope everybody's read the complaint in full um, and also read our uh, conflict of interest policy. We did meet with the attorney um, representing the school and discussed you know how that what exactly our conflict of interest policy says and to summarize for there to be a conflict of interest there needs to be you know a gain that would be um provided to shannon for acting in a certain way so you know holding if it it's not a conflict of interest if you hold a particular belief but if you're holding that particular belief because you're getting something in return that is a conflict of interest or because you would gain for in some way because of that stance. That's essentially what the um, attorney represented to um, Kathy Galuzzo and, and I when we met with her. And Jamie, you can say whether that's essentially what she said. Um, is that- yeah, I, think, I think it's important to, to, for the board to recognize within this policy that it's really talking about a financial gain. Right or some type of some type of gain of property versus emotional. Right. Okay. So, um, I guess that's to the board to decide whether there is a property or financial conflict of interest for Shannon in her representations or. Um, that Kate has provided evidence of. Um, would any of the board members like to comment or discuss? I'll, I'll go first. I, um, so I was <laughs> trying to write things down as fast as I could while people were, were talking just to kind of, you know, um, make sure that I heard everybody right. And <clears throat> if I didn't on anything that I might re-say, feel free to correct me. Um, I mean, obviously I'm not a lawyer, so, um, you know, my definition or what I perceive conflict of interest is, is in, I guess my personal opinion of how I think that it works or doesn't work, um, but it's not a legal opinion. Um, you know, even though, um, as one gentleman already had stated that, you know, even though people are so quick to label individuals without knowing them, um, I see myself as a very nonpartisan person. So, um, you know, you never know where I'm coming from on an issue. Um, even though I was pretty well labeled already this, uh, this evening. Um, and, and I was pretty disappointed with the discussion that was had here on how polarizing the comments were. Um, I mean, we should be thinking more middle and not thinking left or right. Um, so I was pretty disappointed on that. The, so when we do um, vote, which is going to be a challenge here, because I, I don't agree that I have any conflict of interest. Now, Kate is, is my ex-wife, and we share custody of children. Uh, we're also friends. Um, I personally feel that I could uh, vote uh, in a manner that, that I see fit without being uh, persuaded, uh, but in the eyes of individuals, 
you know, it could be the appearance of a conflict of interest. And that's exactly what we're talking about is conflict of interest. So now, am I actually gaining, as we just talked about, a financial uh, incentive for this, um, as it was just laid out? That's no. Uh, but there, there's the appearance that there could be a conflict of interest. Um, I personally, reading through this, and, and before everybody you know, comments, I, I want to go through what I have is, <clears throat> I don't believe that this, in my opinion, rises to what I believe is the definition of conflict of interest. Um, I think it, there's a lot of things that boards, I serve on multiple boards, that we have to take up of issues all the time that could be perceived as you may get some sort of gain out of that. That might be uh, policy in a school for your child or, you know, uh, something else that could be a motivating factor for something that you're going to receive. So it's, it's kind of tricky. I mean, we could be doing conflict of interest every 10 minutes, you know, if we're talking about something that, you know, if I want to buy, you know, if I want to approve the athletic budget, but my daughters might get uniforms out of that, that could be a conflict of interest, right? I mean, my kids are receiving something maybe more personalized. But anyways, so... Um, I do agree with everybody here that we do have the right of free speech, right? And we should have the right of free speech. And board members have the right of free speech. However, I've been a board member for almost a decade on several boards. And as a board member, you don't get the ability to turn off board member or turn on board member. And what I mean by that is when you're in the public perception, you are a board member all the time. So even if you say I'm not a board member, you can have the perception of whatever you're saying is coming from a group or a board or from a higher level of, of um, responsibility. So I, I think we, we as board members, and I always stress that with boards I've been on is, you know, we have to be careful um, of how we converse with the public, especially in, you know, open settings. Now, you have the right to voice your opinion, you know, on climate change or whatever else it is in the world, but you don't have the right to bully or intimidate individuals as a sitting board member. So, um, I do believe that this does go against the code of ethics that we are here to uphold, um, that we do have. Um, and I do believe that this opens the grounds for a board conduct policy that we should have, that we don't, that other boards do. And I think that's something that we uh, should be looking at um, putting forward very soon. I mean, we should all hold ourselves to that most highest standard. Um, the, a couple of things I just want to address on some of the comments that were made, um, the, on Kate's end of things, sometimes in the public's perception, um, it can look like that we're doing things a lot slower than, than would, the public would like. Um, so I know when this first came to our, our attention in October, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew or anybody else, but, so this was made to us in October. We, unfortunately, this group is, we only meet formally once a month. So there's a long period of time between meetings. Um, and then the formal complaint was lodged and was in front of us for our November meeting, uh, which we did not take direct action on other than we did establish a date for this hearing. So, um, so I guess I feel as a board member, we acted within a reasonable timeline um, for the hearing, it may not be um, as fast as sometimes the public perceives wanting to get things done, but sometimes the board's just, you know, slow, not because we're intentionally trying to drag our feet, just, it's just, it's just the way it is. Um, and I don't agree with, you know, the comments of boards stick together. Um, you know, I, I am new to this board, but I've been on many other boards. I've only been on this board since May. Um, and, and I really came on this board really because I wanted to kind of depolarize and have a common sense, uh, open-minded approach to things. 
uh, whatever it is, even if you don't agree. It's okay for board members. It's okay if Rodney and I don't agree on everything. And I wouldn't want Rodney and I to agree on anything because it wouldn't be fun to be with each other. We wouldn't have the differences of opinions. Um, so on those things. Um, so I, I, I don't know what you want me to do, Andrew, on this. Um, if, if I take, if I abstain from the vote, then, then no action will carry tonight because you have to have all four voters. Um, so, but if I vote, I mean, I've already kind of told you what, what I would technically, uh, my point of view on the issue would be, so. Um, I'm okay with you voting if you feel it's, you're able to do so without, you know, being swayed by the, the, personal the other, interests. The other point I just wanted to make is, and, and there was a lot of uh, different um, discussions being had, but looking at things and seeing through the discussions is, um, initially it sounds like that the complaint was more on the personal conduct of a board member in their responses in public and not necessarily the issue at hand or the topic of discussion. It was the way in which our board member conducted themselves in the public setting. Um, if I'm wrong with that, feel free to correct me, but that was kind of my opinion on it. So. When we answer the questions about group policies. Um. Rodney or Peggy, do you have any uh, comment you want to make or discussion? Well, I suppose I ought to. My, my opinion's always been I prefer to sit and look stupid rather than open my mouth and prove it. It worked on the select board, so we'll see if it works on select on school board too. I think we all have conflicts of interest in one form or another. We all have our own opinions. The problem here is how a representative of our board chose to express those opinions, which does affect the rest of us on the board, like it or not. I do not disagree with Shannon's support of the, my daughter calls it the alphabet soup letters because there's so many, I'm getting too old to remember all the letters. And I don't mean any disrespect, but I, I support the alphabet soup letters. I support our children, but I cannot support the way in which a board member chose to express those opinions. I would not expect any of my children to express those opinions that way to somebody else, nor would I express it that way. Because sometimes you do more harm with those kind of words and support than you would if you were much more diplomatic. If you had spoken on Facebook the way you spoke tonight, I think it would make more of a difference. Do I think there's a conflict of interest that we have to say, oh, she shouldn't be on the board, we can't do that anyway. But I certainly agree with the fact that the way those opinions were expressed in a public forum, whether you were representing the board or not, were highly inappropriate and I found offensive to me to, to even read them. I guess I'm too old to use that kind of language. Um, I guess I'm ranting, but I certainly support our kids and I support people who support our kids, but I believe we need to do it in a proper, polite, respectful manner so that people will actually hear us instead of shut us off. And I guess that's what I'll say. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Uh, I guess I'd pretty much agree with what Peggy uh, like said. It's, uh, the comments were inappropriate in poor taste, really bad judgment. That, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put that stuff in. I've been known to swear some though. Uh, usually I don't put it on Facebook, uh, but that's the way it goes. Um, <clears throat> but as far as the conflict of interest goes, I guess anybody that's a board member and has a child in school 
would be guilty of conflict of interest uh, because you're trying to do what's best for your child. You try to include all the children in that, but you know, it's, uh, so I guess that's all, you know, it's, if that's the way you're going to call conflict of interest, then anybody with children in school would be able to be on the board. So I don't see, I can't call this a conflict of interest. I can call it a lot of other things. You know, it, it's not a right way for a board member to act. But I don't think we had the, I, I don't think we have the legal right to throw somebody off the board for being inappropriate. Uh, whether we like it or not. That's all I get. All right, thanks, Rodney. All right. Um, yeah, I guess I would add, you know, just because, similar to what Chris said, just because the board hasn't acted in the way you might you know, somebody wants doesn't mean that we didn't listen and hear and seriously think about things. Or, you know, in this case, there is some action that's happening, which is that we have, I, I do think we are going to probably um, look at, you know, we have the conf, uh, code of ethics. And so I think we will be looking at some form of um, policy to back that up. Because right now, the code of ethics is a a voluntary thing that we adopt at the beginning of our terms, and there isn't anything the board can do to enforce it or um, follow it up. So, you know, I think that is something that's kind of been identified in this process that um, there will be some follow up on, I think. But again, you know, at this point, we're looking at the um, conflict of interest policy, though, since that's the policy that was raised in this case. So, um, and yeah, I, I personally don't see a conflict of interest in this. I don't think um, kind of personal beliefs are something that leads to a conflict of interest. I think it has to be something external uh, that you'd be gaining for um, taking a position or or holding a belief. Um, anyway, uh, at this point, uh, is there anybody, any more board discussion? Or would somebody like to make a motion? <clears throat> anybody? So, uh, just to correct the process, <clears throat> so making a motion would be, <clears throat> so uh, a yes motion would be that there would be a conflict of interest or, or I just want to make sure we get the wording correctly. No, it's, so the, <clears throat> may I speak, Andrew? Go ahead, Jamie. So <clears throat> within our policy, it says the board can determine three things. You can move to issue a public finding that the conflict of interest charge is not supported by the evidence and is therefore dismissed. You can make a motion that the mm -hmm. issue a public finding that the conflict of interest charge is supported by the evidence and that the member should disqualify him or herself from voting or otherwise participating in board deliberations or decisions related to that issue as required by Vermont statute. Or finally, you could issue a public finding that the conflict of interest charge is supported by the evidence, and the board member should be formally censured or subjected to such other action as may be allowed by law. So if you would, if you made a motion on any of those, you could vote in the affirmative of those. Thanks, Jamie. Um, you see it, Chris? Yeah, I'm just rereading. <clears throat> so would anybody like to make a motion on one of those three options?
Um, I would I'd make a motion to issue a public finding that the conflict of interest charge is not supported by the evidence and is therefore dismissed. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? So just to clarify, a yes vote dismisses the complaint. Um, why don't we do a roll call? Peggy? I'll say aye. Rodney? Aye. Chris? Aye. And I'll vote aye. So the um, complaint is dismissed. Okay. Um, well, I think at this point we will adjourn the meeting. So that has concluded our business. Um, I would like to thank everybody for coming out and um, and I, we appreciate when- uh, Actually, can I speak first? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I think at our next board meeting, I would like to maybe uh, discuss a policy on board conduct. <laughs> Okay. That would just be something that we would take upon. <coughs> well, like, we, we start with a discussion. Because it sounds like I think if the plan is to have it at the SQ <coughs> policy. Committee. Right. But I think we should discuss it so we can talk about it at the policy committee. Now, now um, there. But I'm I think sorry. it's, I, no, I just think it's something we need to get going. Um, now, if I remember right correctly, I think you had told me that there there are two boards in our issue that do have a kind of adopt policies and procedures as a board so we have some models so i didn't it know if we not, have a template that we can we do have a template at or i think the desire is is to have it be su wide and every member district would adopt it as a formal policy but in this case I, I, option wise in this case if it went the su way and let's say it's not favorable you could still have individual board, board adopt policy, something yes. like that. Okay. Your policy on policy creation <laughs> says where I get it. Would, no, it's all right. <laughs> the policy on policy creation says the policy comes out of the SU and then is adopted by local district boards. If there's a district board petitioning for a policy and the SU in general doesn't support it, it doesn't stop you at that point to adopt it as a district. Right, but I think the public wants to see some action on this, and I think we should get started on it the next meeting. Yeah, I think, and Rodney, you're on the policy committee. So yeah, you so could well, I do well, back. but this policy committee is very slow moving. I think the, our district would probably start, talk, start the discussion earlier. And you could even draft the policy and bring it to the policy committee. I can, probably. No, but as a yeah, district yeah, board, you could draft right, it. Right, and this is what we're doing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then you could bring it back. would probably adopt the whole thing. Yeah. But can we get, even if it maybe is not in our district or in our SU, can we get a, a good strong I'll work, representation I'll of work the policy on like that? a couple of drafts. That maybe we could have in our packet and we could look at the and BSBA say, hey, we kind of like this, but we don't like that. So I'll have to do some research. And I had given Andrew some stuff early, and I think he shared it with everybody. I don't have it with me, but remember the stuff I gave you, Andrew, there? Yeah, I, I hadn't shared that out, but... Um, that was some stuff that came from yeah, the... Um, the VSBA had some... VSBA some had. They have, yeah, they have those uh, examples mm -hmm. of what the other districts adopt, mm -hmm. but what they don't have is the tangible piece of how to censor behind it. And so okay. I'll... But I'll, I'll get a couple drafts for you to look at. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, well, I look forward to that discussion. I do think it's a kind of somewhat fraught topic anytime we're talking about, you know, board members taking out other, or, you know, taking action against other board members, mostly because, you know, you don't want to wind up in a situation where people are taking action based on having differences of opinion so but we do need a something on conduct i think anyway um at this point i think it's it's time to adjourn so uh i'll make a motion to adjourn okay thanks everybody thank you andrew i knew it wasn't